Cohn's uh, case. He's back in federal court today in Manhattan, this time trying to secure bail. The music mogul was denied oh. yesterday after his arrest on sex trafficking and other charges. Prosecutors say that the charges stem from years of sexual abuse and threats against women. He has pleaded not guilty to those charges, and he ple made that plea yesterday. I want to bring in ABC News' Alex Stone, along with ABC News' legal contributor and trial attorney Brian Buckmeyer for more on this. So, again, we're I'm still waiting to hear the judge's decision today because, again, his defense team is trying to get him out on this $50 million bond. Hey. Uh, and Alex, it does... Oh, my producer just told me in my ear he has been ordered held again. Okay, so the judge, what? Uh, judge Andrew Carter has decided that Sean Diddy Combs will be held again in a federal facility. So let's jump off right there here, Alex, starting yeah, with you. Uh, we're him learning out. from our Aaron Katursky, who's in that courtroom, that already this judge was pretty skeptical of some of the arguments that the defense team was making on Diddy's behalf. Yeah, and that order just coming down right now, Kana, that, that through the day today, uh, it appeared that the judge uh, was from the beginning skeptical about this, talking about that video that was seen around the world in L.A. of Combs uh, allegedly attacking his then-girlfriend, and the judge saying, what's love got to do with that? Ah, that video, okay. That was a relationship that was deteriorating, and that it was nothing more than consensual activity that then had deteriorated what? from there. The prosecutor said that the Combs is a, a danger, clear evidence of dangerousness, a long pattern of abuse, they were saying today. But the defense offered the sun and the moon, saying, we will do anything if you allow them to, to post bail. $50 million bail. They would have off-duty police outside his home, control who comes and goes, take away his cell phone, anything that the judge was willing to do. And the word just coming in now, the judge saying, no way, he will remain in jail. Damn. He certainly will. And again, uh, Sharon reporting from our Aaron Katursky that is in that courtroom. He said that Combs did not appear to react, but that he had his eyes cast downward while he was seated at the defense table when this all came down. And, and so, uh, Brian Buckmeyer, to you. Uh, the judge said the defense proposal to this bail pa package was insufficient um, and that the government, on the other side of that, provided sufficient evidence that Combs is a danger to the community and a danger to obstruct justice and intimidate witnesses. And Brian, I find some of that language particularly interesting when you think about what his defense attorneys were trying to argue, and they were essentially trying to paint a picture of what it would look like if he was to be allowed out on bail with security teams monitoring his going, comings and goings, who would come into the residence. And Brian, uh, his own defense lawyer used the language, what I'm trying to fashion is a situation where any witness intimidation would be virtually impossible. Yeah, and that was the issue that we saw with the initial judge yesterday, that in evaluating his case for the possibility of bond and or bail, uh, that there's always the issue of flight, whether or not someone's going to flee the state, flee the country, whatever it may be, and not come mm. back to court, but also whether or not that Sean Combs' power and influence could be a force of threatening uh, witness intimidation or reoccurring or reoffending in a way that would harm other uh, women in his space, in his space, so to speak. And so the defense is trying to fashion a way of saying he has no opportunity to intimidate witnesses, even though there's alleged evidence that he's reaching out to some of those women to try to ensure that they're not coming forward after that Cassie lawsuit came forward. But it seems mm. like, as, the, as you quoted the judge, that was insufficient. That whatever the bail package the defense tried to put forward was not enough for this judge, Judge Carter, to say that there, he would be a safety to the community and would return back to court on each and every date. I mean, right, again, the head, there was a head of a private security firm even appearing in court. There would be a pre-approved list of visitors, and Combs would have no access to his cell phone or the Internet under this uh, defense proposal that, again, was denied by the judge today. So he will remain in a federal facility until oh. court. And, and, Alex, as we read some of this, they got to let this ass out. They really got to let that down. They got to let the city out. Talk about the trust that they were trying to build with the court in terms of getting uh, Diddy into New York ahead of of this and ahead of his arrest knowing that this was coming and at one point the defense called Diddy an actual altar boy uh, no. Alex the judge pushed back on that pretty quickly the judge did push back on that saying no that, that, that you can't say that and they said today he is eminently trustworthy is the the quote that was used in an argument to the court saying he came to New York he is not gonna flee we're gonna put all of this all of these uh, different aspects into play and he will put up $50 million, his Miami home, his family members would sign off, he wouldn't be able to travel, women would not be able to, to come into his home. And then they went beyond that. When the judge seemed like he was skeptical today, they said, well, all right, 
What about these other things of putting police outside his home, keeping a log of visitors coming in and out? But the judge today saying the government, reading Aaron's notes here, the government had provided sufficient evidence that Combs is a danger to the community mm. and a danger to obstruct justice and intimidate witnesses. A lot of this coming back to, to prosecutors saying he had tried to reach out to a, an alleged victim, saying essentially that if she continued to defend him and stayed on his side financially, she would be okay. They said that was a problem and, uh, and made their argument today and, and the judge coming down uh, on the, the side of uh, prosecutors. Certainly wow. did. And Brian, it sounds like he's going to be held in a special housing unit uh, there in Brooklyn. Are you able to read us in on what that's like at all? Yeah, so he's going to be in the Metropolitan Detention Center. We call it MDC. It's where Sam Bankman Friedman, uh, where R. Kelly was pending prosecution. Wow. Uh, it is called a special housing unit, but people who are there call it the SHU, S H E U. It's a part of segregated population where people are not in what you often hear as gen pop or general population. Some of the difficulties of that, I, I've had clients in the SHU, is sometimes they, they literally go missing for some 30, 45 days. Wow. It's sometimes a place where people go when they have infractions while they're incarcerated. And what I mean by disappear is they don't have access or full access to phones, the internet, calls. Sometimes when my clients go into the shoe, the first time I hear about it is when their family members say, Mr. Ryan, I can't find my son. I can't find my oh, mother. Hell Where no. are they? And it's only through investigation that we find there's an infraction of something in the sense that they're in the shoe. So to the defense attorney's point, Mark, uh, he's saying it's going to be much harder for him to try to mount a defense based on the limitations of where he'll be in that shoe. Again, S-H-U, not like an S-H-O-E. 